Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear, and I'd like to thank you for joining me once again on my Pokemon Leaf Green Critical Lock Challenge. This is the only Nuzlocke run on the internet where every time someone scores a crit, I spin the Wheel of Criticality and suffer the consequences. Uh, you can catch the show you're currently watching live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Cozy Bear Live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. EST. And when you're done with that, you can catch up on all my previous broadcasts on YouTube, where they publish as VODs every Wednesday and Saturday. Without further ado, let's jump right into this episode. It's episode four. Uh, we're only at Vermilion City, but that's partially because these episodes have been shorter and shorter this season around, because I wanted to devote more time to kind of getting them prepared and making each and every stream a more compact and action-packed experience. Uh... Yeah, we just made it to Vermilion City last time, but obviously there are still a lot of trainers uh, in the route preceding us. Uh, our team's looking in pretty good standing after being reduced to just Blueberry and Creamsicle last time. Uh, as you know, previously I used to have quite a few Pokemon from the early routes of the game. We had ourselves a uh, Pidgey called Wild West, who was supposed to be nicknamed Wild Wings. Uh, we had ourselves a... Spiro, who was called Skewers, I want to say. We had ourselves a very lucky Pikachu, uh, who we got in the woods just north of that one town whose name I'm forgetting. But in any case, it's a very difficult Pokemon normally to get uh, this early on in the game, especially during a Nuzlocke run. Uh, we lost all of them, and so we had to kind of rebuild our team from scratch uh, once we got to Cerulean City. Uh, and now look at us! We have a full team of six Pokemon. Only problem is three of these Pokemon uh, are unfortunately bell sprouts. Now, here's the thing I don't really mind Rigatoni because uh, he's at level 20. He's about to evolve. He's the bell sprout that got us through Cerulean Gym. Uh, I don't really mind Tortellini either because uh, this guy is a damn it nature, which normally isn't necessarily the greatest nature to be when you're more of a special attacker, but. He is part poison type, and so that uh, Adamant Nature will 100,000% uh, help boost his poison type stab moves. I gotta be honest, though, I don't particularly care for the third uh, Bell Sprout that we got. Pane, he's quirky nature, so none of his uh, moves are really kind of boosted one way or the other. Now, to be fair, uh, Rigatoni is hardy, so like none of his routes are really boost, none of his stats are really boosted one way or the other either. But we really didn't need a third Bell Sprout. If I got to be perfectly a hundred thousand percent honest, I would have much rather have caught a Slowpoke in the route that we just came from. But nevertheless, he's in our team, and fact of the matter is that it certainly doesn't hurt to have three grass state Pokemon on our party, uh, considering that we are in the town that features the electric type gym leader, uh, Lieutenant Surge, aka a Pokemon's number one American hero from Japan. So yeah, we'll see how things go. Uh, first things first, we're just gonna go ahead and chat with people so that we can get cool items like the VS Seeker. This is actually going to be very important uh, in the long term of this run. I actually, I was under the impression we had gotten the VS Seeker uh, during the last stream, but what we actually got was some other item whose name eludes me that was not the VS Seeker. Uh, but yeah, the VS Seeker, of course, this will allow us to uh, rebattle trainers that we've already battled before. We got to be careful because we might end up accidentally rebattling trainers and they might prove uh, a little bit too powerful. Oh, here we go. Uh, we are meeting up with the Fishing Guru, and we've managed to obtain the Old Rod from him. Uh, and this means we can actually go ahead and we can actually capture uh, a Pokemon within Vermilion City. Normally there is no uh, patches of grass in Vermilion City that we can take advantage of. But here, we can fish to our heart's content. Oh, not ready just yet. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, so you can access Diglett's Cave this early. I thought, I thought that we were actually going to have to... Uh, what's the word for it? I was under the impression uh, that we were going to have to learn how to use cut first before we could access Diglett Cave. Uh, but I guess I was wrong. Uh, let's chat with these Poke Club dudes. Again, they might have some cool items, so... I mean, I hope that they'll have some items and that this guy won't just chat the night away about Rapidash. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! 
Oh, shit. Never mind. I mean, he might be a bit of a chatterbox, but he gave me, no joke, the most useful item thus far in the game. I suspect I probably won't get a whole lot of other useful items around here. Unfortunately, I don't have a Spiro. I used to have one, but he dead. He dead. Uh, I should probably ca uh, get some more Pokeballs, though, while I'm here. It's unfortunate I can't get any... Um, super balls just yet. Sorry, great balls. Probably might want to stock up on a few of these, considering we're just about to get to Lieutenant Surge's gym. Probably doesn't hurt to get a repel as well. And it's always good to have just a couple of antidotes on hand. So let's grab some of those. All right. I know there's a guy in the back of the mart, but it's all right. Well, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy. I was concerned, uh, as it were, uh, that I was going to be stuck with a team of half um, Bell Sprouts, but it seems like we're going to get some new Pokemon real quick. Let's actually, considering that <laughs> we're going to want to level him up for Lieutenant Surge's battle just so that he can get his defense and HP sufficiently up, let's go and catch ourselves a Diglett real quick. I gotta be honest, I don't feel like the that overworld sprite for Pidgey actually did a very good job of capturing his Pidginess, if I gotta be honest. Alright, here we go. Hey! Unfortunately, while it does go to Viridian City, um, you have to use Cut to be able to uh, get yourself back into Pewter City. Look at that, level 21. He's insanely high leveled. Is this like what their levels are on average? Okay. Ooh, if I should have actually had um, that my one super good Bellsprout at the front of the party because he would have been able to status afflict him. Uh, look at that. This is actually a opportunity for us to use withdraw actually to great effect. Although, unfortunately, we weren't able to act first, so it ended up not mattering. Uh, I feel like if I use Bite, I won't kill it, but I know that Diglett is not known for having great special defense. Uh, maybe maybe I'm lowballing my capabilities a little bit too much, actually. Oh, actually, it turns out that was just the right move to use. You know what? That did way more damage than I was ever anticipating it would, so what if we went ahead and threw a ball now? Come on, Diglett. Come on. Yes! That was surprisingly easy. Uh, lives about one yard underground where it feeds on plant roots. Uh, it sometimes appears above ground. Look at that. Uh, what do we want to call this guy? Uh, you know what? Let's keep it short and sweet. Hot dogs. Let's call this guy Hot Dogs. Oh, nope. Don't want to keep you in R.I.P. for long. That's where all the other dead Pokemon are. Not really dead, they're just... They, they fainted in battle, and I figured I'd keep them stashed in the PC. Whoa! Adamantium? Thank... Wait, hold on a second. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Adamantanium. There we go. Thank you for the follow. Very, very much appreciate it. Thank you, and welcome to the stream. I just managed to capture uh, a beloved, lovely Diglett by the name of Hot Dogs. Let's see what nature he is. Lonely nature. Am I correct in stating that that's 
maybe increase attack and decrease defense. Hold on a sec. Let me just check real quick. Pokemon Lonely. Increase defense. Uh, sorry, no. Increase attack stat and decrease defense. There we go. I got it right. Ladies and gentlemen, your boy is a Pokemon expert. Uh, unfortunately, that's not so great because you know that Lieutenant Surge will probably have a couple of Pokemon that know a couple of normal type moves on his team. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of Pene. I'm going to keep him in box one because he is not dead yet. And yeah, looking good. Now, here's the conundrum I face. I have my hands on a good old old rod which means that I can actually fish for a Pokemon in Vermilion City. However, I'm pretty certain that at least right now, the only Pokemon I can get with the old rod is a Magikarp. And we already have a level 16 Magikarp on our team who's going to evolve pretty soon. And so I'm wondering if it's really worth it or not. Like if I should maybe come back later on when I have a better rod so that I can fish myself a Shelter, which I'm pretty certain is another Pokemon that you can get around here and which is, you know, not... Shelter and Cloyster, not exactly the greatest Pokemon in Gen 3. They get much better when they learn uh, Shell Smash in subsequent generations. But I figure that it also wouldn't hurt to at least have a backup Magikarp because having a backup Gyarados is pretty good. Let's go ahead and let's do it. Certainly, there will be other opportunities for us to fish inside towns later on, so I don't particularly mind. All right, let's get him. Here we go. Is it going to be a Magikarp? I think so. Yep, it is a Magikarp, and he's at level five. Ooh. Well, yeah, I don't even feel comfortable using like a, a tackle. In fact, I'm going to shift into Rigatoni. I'm going to status afflict him, and then I'm going to ball him. If many, many streams into the future, Magikarp should faint in battle, aka Gyarados should faint in battle, because you know he's going to evolve into a Gyarados. No way I'm jinxing myself saying that. Uh, I'll swap in this Magikarp and we'll go from there. Now, what should I call this guy? The, the current Magikarp I have in my party is called Creamsicle. Do I want to call this guy Popsicle? Is that a little bit too on the nose in terms of the naming scheme at hand? I could call him Fudgesicle. That's a that's a not bad name. And that's probably like the same amount of characters. Let's do that. Fudgesicle. There we go. Ugh. And he got deposited in the right box, which is just what we wanted. Okay, we have actually one more opportunity to catch ourselves a Pokemon. Actually, can we also potentially fish for a Pokemon in the SSN? Let's check. I'm pretty certain that you could surf here, but uh, obviously you don't gain access to surf at this point in the game. Uh, oh, seems like hmm, th the prompt isn't coming up for me to cast my rod, so I actually think it's not. Oh, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, we can fish, but it's probably going to be another Magikarp. Not only that, it's another Magikarp at level five, which is not great. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to ball this guy right away. No reason to waste any power points. Ah, really? Really? Alright, let's swap in Bellsprout. Or <laughs> accidentally hit run, which I definitely did not want to do. There are a limited amount of Pokemon that I can get on my Pokemon Nuzlocke run. You do know that, right? You do know that, right? I didn't need to run from this dude. I mean, look, I already have two Magikarps. I'm certainly not dying for Pokemon on my team, but fucking shit, man. I did not mean to do that. Uh, We'll go and take on the SSN later on. Uh, 
Uh, there are some trainers around here, so we got to be careful. I'm pretty certain that this is a route where we can catch Drowsy. That'd be pretty cool. It'd be cool to have a, a Drowsy or a Hypno on my team. Those are not typically psychic Pokemon that I tend to really use a whole lot in them Pokemon games. It'd be cool to have them as a change of pace, but we'll see what the route yields. Oh, look at that, Sandshrew. This is actually, like, honest to God, I don't necessarily know if Sandshrew is the kind of Pokemon I'll use up until the end of the game on this run, but uh, certainly not a bad Pokemon to catch before the Lieutenant Surge battle. And it's a new Pokemon that I haven't uh, gotten just yet. So yeah, I'll take him. Uh, I'm going to use Poison Powder on this guy because I'm not confident enough that I could chip damage him well. Yeah, and if I use Vine Whip, I could very easily just instantly kill him. So I think this is probably for the best. Maybe I'm being a little bit overly aggressive throwing a ball right away, but we'll see. Yeah, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, your boy just caught a Sandshrew. Uh, burrows deep underground in arid locations far from water. Uh, it only emerges to hunt for prey. Uh, what do we want to call this dude? Hmm. Oh, you know what? I got the perfect name. We're calling this dude Tapioca. I don't know why, but I, I looked at him and I was just like, this feels like if this dude was like an anime rat like Hamtaro in an anime all to himself, he'd be called something like Tapioca. I feel it. You know? All right, we're going to go ahead. We're going to swap in Tapioca uh, for one of the two Bell Sprouts on our team. And we are going to begin a little bit of training. We're going to train in the route just north of Vermilion City because uh, we did not have the opportunity to do so at the end of last stream. Uh, and then uh, we are going to go back to Cerulean City, get our Vike Voucher. Maybe we'll even uh, get the opportunity to fish in Cerulean City, although... It might actually be more worthwhile if I were to wait for me to gain access to some of the better rods to do so, actually. Okay. Who do I want to train? I completely forgot. We also got Cinnabon v. Beedrill as well. Uh, you know what? Let's just have Cream Skill at the front of the party, and then we can switch into whoever will be the best fit for this battle. I think that's probably for the best. Okay, Pidgey. Pidgey, Pidgey, Pidgey. Uh, mm, what kind of other non-ground moves does this guy have? Ground, Magnitude Dig, Fury Spikes. He also has low defense, so... I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna swap in Blueberry for this one, actually. She'll have at least one Pokemon that's not gra uh, flying type. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, we got our first critical hit of the stream, which means that it is time to spin the prize wheel of criticality. One, two, and three. Well, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Uh, we just landed on Switch It Up, uh, which means uh, that we have to switch our Pokemon uh, three times in the middle of this battle, right here and right now, uh, without doing any attacking moves. Uh, a little bit of a risky maneuver, considering that we, you know... Uh, <laughs> just assembled a nice, hot, fresh new team of cool pokes that we're ready to take on the world with, but uh, them's the rules. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to start off uh, by switching to... Who do I want to switch to? You know what? Potentially controversially, I'm going to switch to Creamsicle because uh, we just caught another Magikarp. If he somehow gets a brutal critical hit and dies immediately... Nope, no brutal critical hits. All right, there we go. I was going to say, if he got 
a brutal, a brutal critical hit and died immediately, we would have another backup Magikarp. Uh, next, I'm going to switch into Tapioca because this guy definitely has decent, if not great, defenses. And he's also level 12, so he's not, you know, the worst thing ever level-wise. Now, here's what I'm trying to figure out. Is Pidgey going to try to use another Gust, or is he going to try to use another Tackle? Because if he uses another Tackle, it's probably pretty safe to swap in Rigatoni. Um... Or, you know what, I could probably also just swap into Blueberry. The thing is, is that if I swap into Rigatoni next, I'm just going to swap into Blueberry the next turn. And so, yeah, it probably... M might as well just swap into Blueberry as my third switch. Keep it simple, you know? Goodbye, Pidgey. Normally, I would not teach uh, my Pokemans how to use Water Pulse this early on in the game because I would want to save all my TMs so that I could clone them later on in Gen 3, but because this is a Nuzlocke run, we need all the firepower we can get. Okay, so this trainer has no less than uh, three Pidgeys at her disposal. Let's see here. This guy did not get like hurt too badly, but... I don't know, 28 over 35. I feel like... And also, yeah, he just has Scratch as, like, his one attacking move. I don't feel like he would be a very good fit for this. So I'm just gonna... I'm gonna keep Blueberry in for the rest of the battle. But I will definitely vary things up a little bit. Blueberry is plenty leveled up at this point. No reason to have him fight all my battles. Uh, three Pidgeys? What the hell? What the actual fuck? Well, goodbye, Pidgey number three. We really, really will benefit from having the experience share soon, because after that initial training session last time around, I feel like I'm beginning to kind of struggle in terms of leveling up Magikarp. I feel like we already battled this guy. Uh, but if not... Hmm. I'm wondering if it would be worthwhile to give... Maybe either Hot Dogs or Cinnabon a chance to level up a little bit. I'll, I'll put, let's put, let's put Hot Dogs at the front of the party. See what this guy throws at me. Oh, Butterfree? I don't feel like, I don't recall Butterfree having access to like, like Absorb in this gen, but... Hmm. Hmm. Butterfree definitely has access to, like, Confusion, for example. That's definitely a move that it knows. Um, which could actually hurt me a little bit, but I am also at level 21. I'm going to use one for Fury Swipes, just to see how that goes, and then either I'll stick in or I'll switch out. Are you fucking kidding me? Hmm. Okay, well... We know that it has access to Sleep Powder. Uh, I feel bad constantly swapping back out to Blueberry, but this guy is pretty leveled up. He is a good tank for taking on these more unpredictable and powerful threats. I wasn't anticipating that this guy would send a, a Butterfree out to battle me, so... Okay, I'm going to do... There's no way I can... E even if Butterfree crits and... I hurt myself in confusion. I can't die at the end of this turn, so I'm going to water pulse it up and hope for the best. Okay, so this guy, Butterfree knows Sleep Powder, Sun Swore, and Confuse Ray. I'm wondering what its fourth attacking move is, because if its, if it's fourth attacking move is like Tackle, I might actually try to switch into Bellsprout for this one and see if I can take it on with Bellsprout. God damn it. Oh shit, critical hit time. I definitely did not uh, need that crit by the way, but nevertheless, it happened. So let's go ahead and let's bring in the wheel. 
of criticality. One, two, and three. Oh, dealer's choice. Uh, give me just a quick second. I think the, the wheel's a little bit, not quite as stable as it should be. There we go, that's a little bit better. Uh, dealer's choice, that means that I get to choose uh, what sort of punishment I want to inflict upon myself. You know what? <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit spicy. I'm feeling a little bit dangerous. Uh, let's go ahead uh, and let's have my prize wheel punishment be no senders, which means that until we get our next critical hit, we can't heal at a Pokemon Center. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's do it. All right. We certainly have plenty of healing items at our disposal, so. <sighs> I So I have a theory. I think I think that Butterfree's fourth move might be Poison Powder because I think I think this whole dude's deal is that his Butterfree exclusively knows status uh, affliction moves. I feel like that would make sense because he has not tried to use any like normal like attacking moves. Jesus Christ. Maybe I'm starting to regret <laughs> um, making it so that I can't heal from a Pokemon Center. Uh, let's just use up a normal potion for now. I don't really need to be super duper cautious. Come on. Come on. Just like that uh, Spice Girl song that was written by that one dude who is not a very nice dude. If you know, you know. Uh, Elijah, you really, you really kind of force my hand there. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and let's actually heal ourselves up just a little bit. Um, again, it's always good to keep Blueberry in good condition, so I'm gonna just paralyze, heal him, and I'm gonna feed him a normal potion. Just so that he's in good standing. Uh, hmm, I don't feel like using my one Awakening right now. Hot Dogs is already at a pretty high level, so let's go ahead and let's actually uh, keep Cream Skull at the front of the party. You better not have three Pidgeys like the previous trainer, because I am sick and tired of flying types. All right, here we go. Rattata. Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. Um, you know what? Let's just go ahead and let's soften him up a little bit. Let's go ahead and go for the tackle. Obviously, Rattata is going to do a lot more damage than us. Um, but that's OK, because we will swap out before it's too late. Uh, and let's go for Rigatoni this time. Ooh, that is an extra little bit of luck on my part. Oh. Ah, you fucking... Ugh. Ugh. Well, it's time for us to spin the Wheel of Criticality. Because we got another critical hit, at least now uh, we can heal from a Pokemon Center, but I, I did not appreciate getting a crit on that particular move. <sighs> One, two, and three. Well, look at that. Lo and behold, uh, the Wheel of Criticality landed on five push-ups, uh, which means that we have to get low and get down. I should, I should have positioned myself 
down a little bit more slowly in my seat. That was, um... I went down a little bit, a little bit fast there. Ugh. <sighs> All right. Um, I don't feel comfortable keeping Rigatoni still in battle, even though Radita is going to die in the next hit. I think it is more safe at this point for me to swap into Blueberry. I'm actually. I want to check something real quick. Rigatoni. How much defense this guy got? 24. This guy got 62. Uh, and Tapioca has 27. I mean, you can't. You can't beat the sheer bulk of Blueberry, but uh, the problem is I need to I need to train up some of the Pokemon I just caught in the wild. Here we go, Hyperfanging at it again. Wow, wow, that did nothing. Jesus. Ooh, if I hmm. I'm wondering. I know Pikachu. Pikachu will definitely have access to a uh, normal type attacking move or two. But you know what? I think I think this is one for Tapioca to take on. Now he's not at full HP, but we'll be able to ascertain very quickly if he's too under leveled or not. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's 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 give our opponents a taste of their own medicine. I have not used Sand Attack in quite some time. Let's sand attack him up. Uh, I don't love that he has Tail Whip, if I gotta be a thousand percent honest with you. What's unfortunate is that <laughs> I have a um, uh, double team. What's unfortunate is that Pikachu has a not impossible chance of paralyzing me when I um, uh, scratch him, so I gotta be careful. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a potion now that I'm at 14 HP. Because Pikachu could probably crit kill me from that amount of HP if I'm not careful. <sighs> this is uh, this is turning into a very haxy battle all of a sudden. Oh, a haxy battle with no misses, if you can believe it. All right, Pikachu has double teamed at least three. Wow. OK, well, I got paralyzed, but I was not anticipating that I'd make each and every one of those hits. Yeah, take that. Take a little bit of your own medicine. <sighs> Sorry, Pikachu. This is just the way that things are going to go. But G give me the hit, will ya? G just give me the hit. Give me the little hit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ugh. I I'm pretty certain that, like, m the lowest that my chances of landing a hit can go down to are, like, 33%. So I just, I just gotta be, I guess I just gotta be patient at this point. Come on, Tapioca, you can do it. I believe in you. If you get accidentally crit killed by Pikachu because your defense has been lowered too much, I won't forgive you. God damn it. Come on. Come on! <laughs> I mean, it's kind of amazing that Pikachu is missing that many times, considering I only had a couple of. There we go! Ladies and gentlemen, give it out to Tapioca for pulling off his first incredibly hard-fought victory in a Pokémon battle. Good job. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead. My team actually got kind of weirdly banged up by those past two battles. So I'm going to go back to Vermilion City. And I am going to heal myself a little bit. Um, so over the course of the past couple of streams, I had meant to bring up uh, the fact that a whole uh, veritable deluge of news about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet recently released. Uh, I meant to talk about it like as early as like what last Thursday stream because I'm pretty certain that the direct aired before even then um, but I have not had the chance to do so I mean 
everything that they've been showing off of the game thus far looks pretty cool, looks pretty good. I know that I am um, outspoken on this matter. I know that there are many people that don't really give that much of a shit about it, but I really, like, really am looking forward to the day where the Pokemon Company finally breaks down and makes, um, what you may call it, voice acting. Oh, by the way, this is a good matchup. matchup. Uh, makes uh, voice acting a thing in the Pokemon games because, man, there were some really awkward moments in Pokemon Sword and Shield where you really felt like the presence or lack thereof of voice acting really hurt that game. And watching that trailer, like, the game looks a lot of fun. I definitely can see myself wasting a lot of hours just wasting the night away with my Poke Pals, adventuring out in a wonderful world of imaginary pocket monsters. But I definitely, definitely could feel the kind of palpable <clears throat> absence of voice acting in my bones. For just a few moments in that trailer, I was like, I really feel like these trainers could benefit from voice acting. You know, there have been, you know, pieces of Pokemon media. Like, obviously, there are all the Pokemon animes, but you also have... Pokemon Masters EX, the mobile app, which has like a fair decent bit of voice acting for its characters in there. It's not like there are like tons of like lines of spoken dialogue, but you do have like pretty much every single character in that game voiced at least to a slight extent. And so I feel like if they really kind of want to commit to it, they can do it. You don't have to like add voice acting to the main character. You can keep them silent. That's perfectly fine. We don't need to give a voice to our MC, but just give us give us a little tiny eeny weeny teeny bit of voice acting because I will appreciate it just so much so much I um I talked about it this on one of my previous streams but I played uh, Pokemon Puzzle League uh, for the Nintendo 64 uh, because people were playing it out of Takuthon and I figured you know what might as well check out hold on I gotta go get the bike before I forget. Might as well uh, recheck out this game after it not really connecting with me way back in the day. And man, that game doesn't have like a ton of voice acting, uh, much like, you know, Pokemon Masters EX. There's just basically the one cutscene at the beginning of the game. Uh, and then you have like a couple of character quips during the puzzle battles. Um, but even just that one cutscene, it was so great to hear Professor Oak and Pikachu uh, and Ash all interact with each other. And I just, I really think that them Pokemon games would really benefit from more of that stuff. Make it like, here's the thing. I don't mind if it's cheesy as hell. I don't mind if it is Gen 1 Pokemon anime level voice acting where it's like, all right, Pikachu, can you believe what just happened? How come your Thunderbolt didn't affect his Graveler in that way? Oh my God. Gee willikers. I don't think Ash ever said that, but point is, you put that in the Pokemon game, I'll be totally down, totally happy with it. Certainly not upset at all. And I feel like, unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there that would be, a lot of people out there that would be like, man, they need Last of Us level voice acting or bust, or I would never accept it. And it's like, nah, just any voice acting, any voice acting will work. Take all the lines of dialogue from Tommy Wiseau's The Room and just insert them into a Pokemon game and there you go. You got yourself a masterpiece of a vocalized performance of a game. A fucking plus. Whew. Uh, oh yeah, and all the other stuff that was shown off in the Scarlet and Violet, Violet, trainer, uh, Violet trailer looks pretty good. I, um... Again, you know, you, you never know exactly how these Pokemon games will bend once you actually play them. I was kind of looking forward to Sword and Shield, and I walked away from that game being pretty lopsided about it. I thought that it... I, I don't know. I, I felt like the early game in those games was, like, pretty solid, but I felt like the further things went along, the more they really degraded, especially when they really tried to force that unnecessary, like, evil, evil villain plot towards the end there. That was really not great. Uh, also really not great is that Tapioca is not doing a lot of damage against Meowth, so I'm going to swap in Rigatoni. Ah, fuck. Fuck sticks. Alright. 
time for a spin from the prize wheel of criticality. Uh, that means uh, that after this battle has concluded, I got a skedaddle back to the Vermilion Pokemon Center, and I got a bench Rigatoni for the next 30 minutes. Uh, it's going to be a little unfortunate because at the end of this battle, Rigatoni 1000% is going to evolve uh, into a Weeping Bell. Um, which, you know, it's kind of one of those Pokemon I'd want to kind of like use on my team a little bit before. Uh, I have to bench it, but them's the rules, so that's unfortunately just what's going to happen. And Meowth is dead. Uh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? How many more experience points does this guy need to evolve into a Weeping Bell? How many more? He needs 10 experience points. Are you fucking kidding me? <sighs> Well, them's the rules. I gotta bench him anyways. Sorry, but we will have to wait yet another half hour before we can evolve you into a beautiful, illustrious, luscious, delicious, beautiful, sublime, supreme weeping bell. And a victory bell eventually. I could actually swap in one of my other bell sprouts from my box if I want to. That, that would almost feel like cheating, but I mean, nothing's in them rule books. I could also swap in Fudgicle, Fudge, Fudgesicle. Yeah, it's my fault that I gave him such a tough name. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes so that we can set things straight. And there we go. All right. Uh... I'll go ahead and I'll swap in Tortellini. He's certainly not the strongest spell spread on my team. He's only level 13, so it's not like this is going to be like a perfectly equivalent swap. I also probably will not be leveling him up a whole lot. I, I talked earlier at the beginning of the stream about how it's kind of good that he's an Adamant Bellsprout because it means I can kind of trick him out differently from the other bell sprout i can kind of train him to be a little bit more physically oriented um truth be told though i probably will not end up doing that unless my options end up being really limited uh let's see let's see uh, i should have trained him a little bit at diglett cave if i gotta be honest all right now i don't remember how tough some of the trainers around here are i feel like I feel like this trainer over here might have fire type Pokemon. He looks like he's a gambler who I know. I know that class of trainers are prone to having at least a fire type Pokemon or two on their team. So I'm going to put Diglett at the front of my party and hope for the best. All right, let's see. Oh, it's actually a gamer, not a gambler. Interesting. Oh, I was actually completely wrong on that one. Not a fire type Pokemon at all. Um... I guess I could swap in Tortellini if I really want to. I could also swap in Cream Skull. Cream Skull actually might be able to <laughs> body their attacks okay, even though he can't do a lot of damage in return. I just, I don't immediately want to swap into Blueberry because Blueberry is already pretty leveled up. Let's see how this goes. See, that's the thing is I knew Poliwag would probably only have access to Bubble, which is like a very uh, weak move, even weaker on Cream Skull. So let's see if we can do this. Oh, he actually has Water Gun as well, which is... Wow! How is it that much more powerful than Bubble? Okay, well... I think I know what we gotta do. Actually, I am just curious. This dude has a total of 16 special defense. And... Wow, Tortellini has exactly the same amount of special defense. He does have access to a nice... Uh, grass stab type move though let's go ahead and let's swap him in if worse comes to shove i can always swap in war turtle Ooh, that would have been bad would have been very bad hmm. 
I will say, uh, going back to uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I am interested to see how they're going to handle them legendary Pokemon in those games, because based on the footage we've seen, it would seem as if you're actually going to gain access to the cover art legendaries for those games, like pretty much right off the bat, because they show you like extensively exploring their open world environments while riding around on them. Uh, I'm going to actually keep Tortellini in for this one. And I'm wondering, like, is the idea that it like, is it going to kind of be like, um, what's his face? Zygarde from Pokemon Sun and Moon, where you actually gain access to Zygarde uh, pretty relatively early on in those games. Uh, but when you first gain access to him, he's only at level 10 and you have to continuously collect more and more cells over the course of the game to level him up and, you know, allow him to take on more and more powerful forms like his 50% form and his perfectly complete form. Well, is it going to be a similar thing where when you finally gain access to the or rather when you first gain access to the cover legendaries for those games, are they going to be like really weak? They can only just like let you kind of walk around on them and then you regain a little bit more of their energy and they're going to be able to transform into bikes and then you gain a little bit more and they can fly and so on and so forth. That makes sense to me, but you never really know what the people over at Game Freak are going to do. Okay. Uh, putting hot dogs at the front of that battle was a gambit that didn't really pay off, but I feel like it will eventually at some point pay off. Nice. I just need to find the right trainer, but I feel like most of these trainers are the kind of trainers that would have, like, Raditas at their disposal. This guy! I know I just said that the previous gamer we battled would have uh, Fire-type Pokémon on, on his team, and we were dead wrong on that, but I have a feeling we might be right on the money for this one. Competition. Can't get enough. See, he is a competitor. He's somebody who's fired up. He's somebody who definitely does not have fire-type Pokemon. Fuck. Yeah, not good. Not Definitely not a good idea to keep this guy in. Um, hmm. Let's see here. So Cinnabon actually doesn't have ba that bad special offense. It's at level 21. He's very weak compared to the rest of our team, but he also is... Uh, part bug and part poison type, which means that can't be poisoned, and B, he's going to get hit very, very, very weakly by Bellsprout's grass type attack. So you know what? I'm actually going to swap into Cinnabon for this one. I'm pretty, and unfortunately I got hit by S Sleep Powder, but again, the worst he can do is hit a very weak Vine Whip while I'm asleep, so I should be okay. Oh, he knows how to use rap. I forgot about that. Still will probably be pretty pretty on the weak side, right? So. Oh, and he knows how to use growth. Mm, come on, Cinnabon. Okay. We we gotta we gotta be careful here, cause it, with enough uh growths, Bell Sprout can become a little bit of a menace. Are you fucking kidding me? Fucking hit a few, just a few more times, Cinnamon. Just a few more times. Just a itty bitty picky pick poco 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 more times, all right? I don't think that's a word, by the way. I, I, I think I was trying to say, like, oh, here we go, critical hit. After the fury attacks are over, I'll have to spin the wheel of criticality. Well, look at that. Look at that. A little bit of the luck I got from that crit kind of rubbed off into the overall move. Uh, let's go ahead and let's spin that wheel. I think I was trying to say piccolo, uh, which is small in Italian, I'm certain. One, two, and three. Go broke! Wow. Uh, this is, of course, uh, the punishment where after this battle, I will have to go to my nearest Pokemon Mart, uh, and completely go broke. Spend any money that I've accumulated thus far 
on frivolous items and then immediately sell those items so I can't use my money anymore. It's uh, a very sad thing for the prize reel to land on, albeit something that doesn't immediately uh, endanger my team, so it's not the worst thing ever. Let's just get through this battle. Oh, I'm really, I feel like I'm really kind of threading the needle, he needle here. I don't feel like, I think I'll be okay, but I definitely, I think I my, my eyes were bigger than my stomach on this one. Oh, there we go. We got a free turn. And he got a free turn too. Fuck. Uh, you know what? Uh, I know that I'm going to have to give away all my money in just a second, but we got ourselves a super potion. Let's just heal up. Give myself a little bit of leeway. Let Bellsprout do another aimless attack. And let's try ourselves one more fury. Fury attack. See if it connects. There we go. Goodbye, Bellsprout. I could, if I really want to, I could actually keep Cinnabon in for Oddish. She might actually be able to do okay. Oddish might have access to Acid, which is a decently powerful poison type move that will only like uh, times two not very effectively hit me. I'm gonna, I'll keep him in for now because he's at full health and we'll see how we fare. Okay, unfortunately Fury Attack is doing about the same amount of damage as last time. Oddish is using Sweet Scent, uh, which makes me more susceptible to being hit by moves that have low accuracy like Sleep Powder. Oh, critical hit. I'll have to spin that wheel again. All right, wheel time. One, two, and three. Draw a Pokemon. Let's go ahead and let's finish off this battle. We'll draw our Pokemon and then we will get rid of all the cash we have on us. Okay, so Oddish, we know that Oddish has Sweet Scent. We know that he has Sleep Powder. It means that he probably has two more moves. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that one of his other two moves is probably Absorb. Like that, that seems like a sound guess. I don't think that he has Absorb and uh, Acid, because I feel like he would have used Acid by now. And I suspect that the other move probably is another status move like Paralyze uh, Powder. Stun Spore. That's what I meant to say. Wow, he, he's really... This Oddish really does not have a lot of options on hand. Alright, here we go. Fury Attack, let's go. God damn it. Well, prepare yourselves for a lot more sleeping after this. God damn it, what the hell? We, we, we gotta check and see what TMs we can teach Cinnabon after this, because this is just not sustainable. Oh, wow, so he doesn't have any... doesn't have any normal attacking type moves. Well, I'm glad that he paralyzed me, because that means we only need to worry about Paralysis keeping us down. <sighs> it, that was that really like three times in a row that it only hit two times? Because that is a little bit much. This is like this is like the equivalent of last time I streamed where I got like a million fucking crits in a row. Like I I swear to God, if I get two hits five times in a row here in this battle, I am gonna fucking rage. Uh, critical hit time. Well, three hits. Oof. 
We got a Pokemon to draw, and we got to get rid of all our cash. Let's see what else we got to do. Drop five. We also got to drop five of our items, so let's go ahead and let's finish this battle off, because we got a lot to do. I mean, look, the, the reward for this battle is at least we'll be able to walk away with a hefty experience point reward for Cinnabon. I don't think he'll be able to get all the way to, like, level 12, but look at that. 300 points. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah, I really need to teach him something else, so. All right, we got to drop five items. Let's see. What do we want to get rid of? We can always get rid of an antidote. Uh, we can get rid of a uh, paralyzed heal, because it's not like we're going to get paralyzed too much in that one gym battle. Uh, burn heal. Do we really? Yeah, let's hold on to it. Uh, we can get rid of two Pokeballs, because we certainly don't need them right now. And good to have an escape rope on hand. Uh, you know what? Because we got to give our proper tax to the hacks gods. We're going to go ahead and we're going to toss one super potion. All right. We tossed our five items. Next up, let's go ahead and let's draw a Pokemon from memory. If anybody in the chat has any suggestion as to what Pokemon I should draw from memory, uh, by all means, let your thoughts know now. Uh, if you don't have any suggestions, that's okay. I'll just use uh, a Pokemon randomizer to choose uh, the Pokemon for me. <sighs> Last time around, we drew good old Wigglytuff, as you can see over here. Who is it going to be next time? Let's find out. All right, I'm on randompokemon.com. Let's see who it's going to be. Oh, look at that. It's Elekid. Well, ladies and gentlemen, unless anybody else has any other suggestions, your boy is ready to start drying up some Elekids. And the thing about Elekid is that this guy uh, very prominently has uh, two electrical plugs on the top of his head. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually start with that first. Certainly it's the easiest part of his body to draw, so I don't think that you would begrudge me for doing so. Maybe they're a little bit on the small side, but it's not like, you know... You, you can't fault me for doing something so easy off the bat. Now, here's the thing about Elekid, is that his body is very round. He is a very round boy. And, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and say that I think that his entire body is round like such. Now, he's got little kind of like tiny kind of cartoonish -y feet like such. Uh, the, the middle parts uh, of the legs over here are kind of blackish. And he has little claws coming out of his feet like such. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing to the other footsie over here. And... There we go. We got his feet taken care of. Now... I like his eyes. Let's go ahead and let's focus on his eyes for a second. I'm going to say that his eyes have a very distinctively uh, triangular shape to them, like such. And he, he kind of has that, like, anime ash eye thing going, where they're, his irises are very kind of, uh, like, how do I say, like, oblong, like that. That seems about right. I think I actually kind of nailed it. Uh, and he has, like, a very kind of small little kind of slit mouth like that. And he has a couple of little teeth. I think I'm doing a pretty good job here. I mean, it also does kind of look like Voltorb or Electrode. And now for his hands, he kind of has like the same little like arm things that his legs look like where they're kind of blackish like that. Uh, but then his actual hands themselves are like big and kind of bulbous and they have like little, uh, little like claw thingies at the ends. Like such. Uh, if I recall correctly, I'm pretty certain that Elekid also has a tail, but not a very big tail, just sort of like a small tail. I don't remember if there's like 
It's supposed to be like an electrical plug at the end of the tail. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put two little uh, like stick thingies over there to represent uh, this hypothetical tail that may or may not exist. And the thing about Elekid is that his evolution, Electabuzz, is partially based off of uh, the Oni, which are said to wear like uh, like underwear that have like tiger stripe patterns to them. They're like supposed to be like yellow and black. And so I'm pretty certain that Elekid has a similar kind of motif going on where he's got kind of alternating stripes of black and orange on his body. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like this marker is actually beginning to run out of ink. Uh, I have another one on hand, though, so it's not that big of a deal, but I feel a little bit bad kind of coloring all these things in with black, but I'm pretty certain that I kind of nailed it. Now, I feel like there is one more spot on Ella Kid's body where I didn't apply as much markings as I should have. I feel like there's one spot where, like, He's a little bit more colored than I'm forgetting. You know what? Maybe he has... I seem to recall him maybe having like a furled brow. So let's go ahead and let's add that over there. I mean, it kind of just made him look angrier, but that's kind of how I remember him. I know Elekid is like the one that's like really angry and Magby is the one that's like kind of like scared, kind of like a deer in headlights, if you know what I mean. All right. Well, I think I got him. Ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, bring our desk cam out and bring our main cam in. Ladies and gentlemen, your boy, your boy knows how to draw Elekid truly perfectly well. I mean, I don't see how you could not look at this drawing and say, oh man, that right there, that right there is Elekid. I think I nailed this one. I think I really got this one. I mean, I think... Most of all, I think I really nailed the eyes, but I think that the rest of the body is pretty good, too. Good job, Cozy. All right. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, we have to fulfill uh, the final thing that we promised we would do here, which is that we got to go back to a Pokemon Center, <clears throat> heal up our Pokemon, and then we got to go to a Pokemart, uh, and we got to uh, sell all the money that we currently have in our inventory. Uh, now, here's the thing. We'll have to sell however money we need to sell uh, that we have on hand uh, when we get to the Poke Mart. So if we can avoid battling any more trainers here, that will be great because it means we won't have to give away their money either. There we go. to have a little bit more water. Thank you, Nurse Joy. I certainly hope to see you again. Um, let's see, how much more time do I have to wait on Bellsprout? Eight minutes. Okay, 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 okay. Um... Ba -ba -ba. Let's go to our Pokemon Mart and let's get rid of our Moolah. Let's see here. Well, we actually have uh, an even number of money, so we can actually probably get rid of most of our money. Uh, let's go and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy... 74 antidotes and then I'm gonna buy an awakening and that means we will have exactly zero money left and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get rid of said items And there we go. That is how the shish kebab is cooked. Um, I didn't mind leveling up Cinnabon to level 11, but truth be told, we're probably not going to use him in our party for that much longer. I'm thinking that we really need to focus on leveling up tapioca and hot dogs. I think that we're at a disadvantage keeping them this week for this long. So I'm going to actually put tapioca at the front of the party. As much as I want... 
uh, Creamsicle to evolve into a Gyarados soon. The fact of the matter is that he's not going to be very useful in the upcoming battle uh, with Lieutenant Surge. So, at least right here and right now, it's kind of best if we just focus uh, on leveling up Sandshrew first. And lo and behold, we're actually up against a Pokemon that's not a bad matchup for him, although he did just intimidate us. I'm gonna... Hmm. Hmm. If Hot Dogs doesn't immediately get hit by a super strong attack, I'm gonna keep him in for this one. Well, this probably won't do that, that much. Oh, there we go. It, de it definitely did more damage than you would anticipate on account of the fact that Hot Dogs just has real low defense, but... All right, hot dogs, get him, get him. Yeah, check that out. Can you believe that back in Gen 1, Dig was a 100 base power move? Unfortunately, I think it's only like an 80, uh, like a 60 base power move right now. Later on, it gets bumped back up to 80. Um, but yeah. All right. Ooh, Sandshrew versus Sandshrew, a mirror match. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I could swap in Blueberry. Let's... Man, I really wish we had our utter Bell Sprout in our party for now, but let's swap in Tortellini for this one. It ended up being a good decision, because, of course, his defense curl isn't going to really help him out a whole lot. And his Poison Sing also doesn't help him out a lot, because we... Uh, cannot be poisoned as a poison type Pokemon ourselves. Uh. Goodbye, Sandshrew. Zubat. Mm. One thing I could do is I actually could teach uh, tapioca or hot dogs how to use Rock Tomb from the first gym. But I feel like it's a little bit too early. We, we just got them, and like you, you don't know if one of them might end up fainting sooner rather than later. Let's see here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to swap in Tapioca for this one, and then I'm going to switch out to War Turtle. We just, we really need to teach Tapioca a better move than Scratch to attack his opponents with. Scratch is just such a, a nothing move at this point in the game. Uh, by the way, you might have noticed this within the Twitch chat, but I actually recently made the transition over uh, from using Nightbot to stream elements. I'd been using Nightbot for a real long time because it definitely was one of those um, impulse decisions of like, all right, I need some sort of uh, bot in my chat sending messages day in day out uh what can i use what can i use nightbot there we go we're gonna use this dude um and nightbot serviced me fine but uh i kind of had been on the lookout for a while for something better and recently i actually installed stream elements just so that i could uh set up the very specifically fonted um chat element that you can see below my webcam right now and uh, I was quite impressed with uh, how stream elements was able to set that up and so I went looking into uh, what stream elements is um, chatbot uh, functionality looked like and I was impressed by like just how many like uh, already kind of built in chat commands there were things like follow age for example which I had to set up manually with um, Nightbot were things that were already... Fuck, I am going to have to swap this guy out. Uh, things like Follow Age, for example, which I had to set up manually with Nightbot, were uh, already pre-included in Stream Elements, among with, along with many other pre-included uh, commands. Um, and so I figured, you know what? You know what? Why not make the swap out for Stream Elements? And so I went ahead and I did so. I also partially made the jump to Stream Elements because the... Uh, current message that you've probably seen in the chat a couple of times. Uh, thanking my viewers for tuning in. Uh, back when I was trying to do that timer via Nightbot, uh, I could only set it up so that people had to be 
uh, chatting in the Twitch stream for it to be displayed in the chat. And I was like, no, 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 I want this message to be displayed in my Twitch chat, regardless of whether people are chatting or not, just to let them know that like, hey, I appreciate your presence and I, you know, hope, look forward to kind of like seeing you on many future streams to come, regardless of whether you yourself chat or not. But Nightbot wouldn't let me do that. Uh, stream elements would, which is why I made the change. I am really hoping that Dig KOs this guy, because if he hits me with a critical hit, I am going to be in trouble. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Even if that move had critted, I would have been perfectly fine. Uh, I do feel bad that I'm not only hot dogs is benefiting from the experience gain from this dude, but it's okay. I don't love to use Magnitude because it's kind of an unreliable move. Thankfully, uh, Dig is very reliable. I'm happy that I didn't get hit by that double kick, by the way, because that for sure would have critted. Oh, I got poisoned again. Wow, that didn't level me up. I am shocked. Uh, we got two Poison Boys on our team right now. I'm going to... Just swap to Creamsicle to the front of the party in case something unexpected should happen. Like we get randomly called into a trainer battle and I'm going to return to town. Do we... are we going to be okay? 15 and 11. Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Wow! I, I thought we would be able to make it back to the Pokemon Center without needing to heal. Uh, here we go. All right, so Hot Dog still has six. I'm pretty certain that we can make it back. Let's see, four. All right, we're good. Oh, look at that. Sorry. I got real spooked for a second. My timer is up, which means that we uh, can add uh, our original Bell Sprout back to our party. And just in time, because I was really, really hoping to ye start using uh, Weeping Bell again. Or rather, I was really looking forward to finally being able to use Weeping Bell for the first time. That's, that's what I meant to say. Okay. Goodbye, Tortellini. I mean, I don't... I don't dislike uh, that we, you know, got to train up Tortellini a little bit. It's always good to have some good backups, good reserves for when you need them. But I'm glad to have Rigatoni back in. Uh, all right. We're going to switch Tapioca back to the front of the party because we need to continue to level that bad boy up. And we are going to go and battle some more trainers. Uh, I don't think that we... Have we battled this guy yet? No. We have battled that guy. This guy we've battled too. They, they all look the same. Literally. Uh, we have not battled that guy though. Dad dude over here. Oh, here we go. Engineer Bernie, a trainer class. I don't feel like we really got to see a whole lot of again in the future. Ooh, if this guy had ground type moves, this would be a great matchup, but we don't, which means that we are swapping in uh, to our good pal Hot Dogs. Hmm, not a fan, not a fan. I probably could have hit a magnitude 6 and I still would have KO'd him. Goodbye. Yay. You get a level and you get a level. Ooh, I, um... Hmm. Let's see, is there anybody else here who's really close to leveling up? Ooh. There's Bell Sprout, but I feel like it would probably be better for me to just, yeah, ha have him fight in something else. Uh, you know, what? I'm gonna actually swap in Creamsicle for this one, because we we still need to continue kind of providing him with bits and pieces of levels here and there. Let's 
Sorry, Magnemite. Wow, the, the magnitudes keep getting better. Good job. If this is a crit, though, I'm going to be upset. One of the unnecessary, unethical crits. Wow, Magneton. They're really, really gunning for our head, and it is unfortunate for them that we already have Diglett in our party. If we did not have Diglett in our party here, I would actually be really sweating right now. Uh, let's swap in Tapioca. Ugh. Now, Sonic Boom is actually not that bad of a move. In fact, if Magneton had been able to kind of pull off that move twice in a row successfully before we could have attacked, he could have actually killed us because Sonic Boom does 20 damage and we have 38 hit points. You do the math and that means two moves were dead. Uh, so I'm actually going to play this one close to the chest. I'm actually going to dig. I love, by the way, how nice-looking Magneton's uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green sprite is. Uh, I, I quite like um, his sprite in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, but his Leaf Green sprite is very squat and very fat, and I kind of love it. That was not a lot of um, XP, by the way. Uh, you know, let's go ahead. Instead of battling another trainer, I'm actually just going to battle against some jabroni out here in the wild. There we go. I was hoping it would be another Sandshrew. Goodbye. All right. Hello to Weeping Bell. Hell yeah. Now, are we going to learn any new moves? Nope, nothing yet, which is unfortunate. I would love to learn Razor Leaf right now. Look at that. Look at how much of a boost this guy's stats have gotten. He still kind of pales in comparison to War Turtle, which is a hunk, but still not that bad. His uh, special attack and I mean, both his attack and special attack are great. So, no, no complaints there. Certainly no complaints there. Uh, okay. Tapioca, you're going back to the front. Okay. Alright, I'm trusting, sir, that you're going to have some more Electric-type Pokémon for us to demolish. Don't disappoint us now. Hell yeah. There we go. Now, we we still need to be careful about Sonic Boom. And, and I guess Super Sonic as well. The good news is that we're very fast, so we have the speed advantage. There we go. Got him. We've battled three uh, gamesters on this route thus far. The other two guys, they had uh, water and grass type Pokemon, respectively. I'm hoping that this guy has fire. He does. There we go. I, I was just thinking when I was battling the first one, I'm pretty certain that one of these guys has a Growlithe. It was probably this guy that I was thinking of. It was probably this guy. Now, Tapioca is a little bit worse for wear, but hot dogs will probably still be OK. So I'm going to swap into him. Ember's going to do a lot of damage, but it's not going to do that much. 
And we have the speed advantage, so we are going to dig, 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 dig our way to victory. Sorry, Growlithe. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, do we want to swap out again? If I could take on uh, Vulpix entirely with Tapioca, that would be great. But Vulpix might have an attack or two up its sleeve to make things hard for us. I could also try my luck with Creamsicle, who might be able to muscle ahead with his type advantage. Let's 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 see what we can do at Creamsicle. Uh, actually, this is not probably will not go great. If he just keeps using quick attack, we might be in a bad space. And tail whip, yeah, this is not not gonna go good. Not gonna go good. Uh, I'm just uh, n no reason to kind of waste any more time. I am going to. Swap out to... Well, let's give Blueberry another bone. Speaking of bones, I know this is the worst transition of all time, but I actually finally managed to beat Chicory last night. Uh, I'd been playing the game for quite a few weeks. I'd actually been recommended the game uh, by one Janet Garcia of Kinda Funny. Not personally, she just mentioned the game many, many times on her appearances on Kind of Funny as a game that she really uh, connected with on the Switch, and so I finally uh, decided to check it out. Uh, and I walked away satisfied, but not as satisfied as I could have been. I, 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 I thought that there were a lot of great things about the game. I thought that the writing was exceptional. I thought the soundtrack was really good from the same composer as Celeste. So, you know, it's going to be a good soundtrack. Um, the, the central mechanic of using a paintbrush to kind of paint the world around you um, was very kind of clever in theory, but I kind of felt like the more and more that I got into that game. Uh oh, is this item finder? I, don't know. I could probably get up to 30 Pokemon on my Nuzlocke run, but I also don't need the item finder, so it's all right. Yeah, I just kind of felt like the the whole kind of painting mechanic in Chicory just got kind of tedious after a while. Snorlax is level 30. Thankfully, we can't level him up. We can't. Sorry. Uh, we uh, cannot wake him up just yet, which is good. I found uh, that every time that I would kind of enter into a new um, area within Chicory, because Chicory is kind of laid out like uh, a Link's Awakening or Oracle of Ages or Oracle of Seasons, where the entire map is made up of these little squares where there's sort of new stuff going on in each and every one of them. And each time you enter into a new one, it's like, hey, you have a new opportunity to paint, paint, paint your heart away with your magic paintbrush. And I can see somebody who's like really just lives and dies and eats and breathes painting and being artistic, just getting a real kick out of exploring through that entire game and painting it to their heart's desire. But I very quickly was like, OK, cool. I will like paint here and there when I feel inspired, but I feel more guilty than uh, like really obliged to kind of paint in a lot of these places. And the further and further I got into that game, the more and more I was just like, fuck, like another new uh, map screen. I really don't want to spend the time painting this in. I'm going to do it out of obligation, but not because I really want to. And yeah, it just it got very kind of tedious. I was also kind of disappointed by, I feel like, the kind of rollout of kind of new items and abilities that the game gives you uh, that allows you to really kind of that will that allows you to kind of enrich your the way in which you explore its world. But when I think back to the likes of, um, you know, a link uh, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Not not A Link to the Past. It came out right after it, though. Link's Awakening. When I think back to Link's Awakening, Oracle of Ages, Seasons, uh, even The Minish Cap, I feel like all those games are really good at just doling out new items that kind of enrich the ways in which you can explore the world around you at, like, a very good, consistent pace. And in Chicory, it really felt like a lot of those uh, upgrades were just 
delivered to you at a very kind of staggered rate. And I, I also found like a lot of them just kind of felt like, oh, critical hit, here we go. I felt like a lot of them just, they, they just, not a lot of them felt like distinguished or different enough from each other to really be worthwhile. Like at one point you gain the ability to swim on paint that you've painted on land, and then you gain the ability to swim on paint you've painted on water. And it's like, both these, you know, do a good job of really kind of expanding how you can explore the world. But I was kind of hoping that both would feel pretty distinct from each other. The game really, really, really trust that like the kind of central core paintbrush gimmick will kind of make up for this kind of general lack of like new items and upgrades over the course of its runtime and i just kind of walked away from it being like ah uh, I, I i just was not that enthused by it but i still think that people who are very artistic minded might get a, a kick out of it again it has fantastic writing and i would still recommend the game uh on kind of that aspect alone um Let's go ahead uh, and let's spin the prize wheel of criticality. <sighs> One, two, and three. Oh, it just, just, just barely landed on five push-ups, which means that we uh, have to get down and dirty on the floor doing push-ups like we don't got no more. Let's go ahead and let's bring in the proper camera. Also, oh, look at that. Reese's Pieces landed on the floor. I don't know how it got there. Uh, throw that in the garbage before I forget to do so. Alright. Back to the grind. I don't think we've battled this dude yet. Mm. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep Tapioca to the front. No reason not to... No reason to switch him out. These Raditas probably have access to Hyper Fang, but I have good-ish defenses, so let's see if we can... You know, I guess not anymore. Let's just see. I just want to see how much damage Scratch will do. Wow! Ladies and gentlemen, that was a crit if I've ever seen one. Let's go ahead and let's spin the prize wheel of criticality. Ooh. So sorry to Tapioca. This means that after this battle, uh, I am unfortunately going to have to bench you in my Pokebox for the next 30 minutes. So sorry, but them's the rules. All right, let's finish the battle. Fuck. Now, thankfully, that didn't kill me, but that did way more damage than I would have liked. And we got to spin the prize wheel again. So let's do that. One, two, and three. Draw a Pokemon. Ladies and gentlemen, we are drawing lots of them Pokemon tonight. If anybody has a suggestion in the chat of who I should draw, let me know. And I will fulfill your wish. 
I'm happy at least that we got tapioca to level 16. Um, we should swap this out with someone else. You know what? Let's swap in Rigatoni. His first battle as a Weeping Bell. Let's go for it. Ooh, a lot of damage. Goodbye, Radita. What, three Pokemon? I, I, I did not know he had that many. Uh, you know what? I'm going to start out... I'm going to swap in Creamsicle for the beginning of the battle. Uh, and then I'm going to swap in Blueberry immediately. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit up a random Pokemon generator and we will find out just what Pokemon we are going to draw next. All right, let's go. Togekiss. Ooh, now this is a Pokemon that I have not thought of in quite some time. Of course, Togekiss. Uh, a Pokemon introduced in Gen 4 in the Sinnoh region uh, as an evolution to Togetic, uh, the Gen 2 fairy flying type Pokemon, uh, who is not fairy type until Gen 6, of course. Um, Togekiss, one of those Pokemon that I actually don't dislike all that much. I feel like it would have been very easy for them to mess up Togekiss's design like so many other um Pokemon evolutions they introduced in that gen, but I actually thought that Togekiss was okay. Uh, now, will I be able to draw it from memory successfully? Well, that's what we're about to find out. Now, what I remember about Togekiss is that he has a very... Oh, this, this marker is running out of ink. I'm gonna... I think this is its... This is its uh, last stand, as it were. The thing about Togekiss is that Togekiss has a very... Uh, how to say... Like, almost like jet-like design. He, he has his arms kind of spread wide. Almost like he's like a, a bird in flight. That's the weird thing about Togekiss is that he looks like a bird and he is part flying type, but he's not meant to be a bird. It's weird. I'm really curious like what Pokemon they based Togekiss's design off of. I, I really don't dislike it. I think it's actually one of the, the better Gen 4 Pokemon designs we got. Uh evolved Pokemon or whatnot, but yeah, it's it's an unusual design. It's a design that really kind of sticks with you, but it's weird. It's weird. Now, I seem to recall that the bottom of Togekiss has like like some of those like weird like designs that you have at the bottom of Togepi's uh, shell. Like the weird kind of like triangle things like this, I think. If I'm wrong about that, I mean, I'm Sorry, I will <laughs> beg from your forgiveness, uh, oh humble Pokemon gods. Yeah, I think that's about good. We don't want to kind of overdo it. Now, the head is where things get really interesting because there's not that much detail going on in the head, but the head is also kind of where I feel like we really need to kind of nail things. I know that Togepi, to sorry, Togekiss has these sort of like tiny little beady eyes, not unlike what... Togetic had. They kind of look like that, but there's a lot more detail going on here. He has like a nice kind of like happy mouth like that, I think. And I know that he has like tips on his like three little spiked hair things over here. And there's definitely something that I'm missing. I know that he has, does he have like kind of like a chin? He definitely has kind of like a chin, something of that nature. And what else? I feel like there's probably like a couple of accents that I'm missing on the little feather thingies over here. So I'm just going to kind of draw those in. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and say here, I feel like there are like three little like, like arrow thingies over here. Basically, Togekiss's design is just all triangles. Yeah, I feel like if I start adding even more details, I'm gonna just start overdoing it. So I think that we more or less nailed it. I'm gonna kind of put down my pen and call it a day right here and right now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your boy just drew the one and only Togekiss. I mean, we've drawn some amazing Pokemon designs in the past, but I truly think that this design for Togekiss, it's bee's knees, it's horse apples, it's the dog's bollocks. It is truly, without a doubt, the premier Togekiss design within the realm of designed Pokemon made by people who don't actually remember how those Pokemon in question look like. I mean, do you disagree with me on that one? If you do, let me know in the chat. Whew. I don't disagree with myself. I thought it was a fucking plus. Uh, and speaking of a fucking plus, uh, before we continue with the show, uh, remember, as always, that you can catch the show you're currently watching live over on twitch.tv slash Cozy Bear Live uh, every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST. Uh, I appreciate however you choose to support the show, be it by following, subscribing, or an honest-to-goodness tip. Uh, but you don't have a loony or toony to toss my way, or even if you don't have a Looney or Toonie to toss my way, that's what I meant to say. I, For a second, because of my misspeaking, I was implying that no, nobody that's watching the stream has any money. I'm sure that you have at least some money if you're watching this on the internet. Maybe you're watching it from a library computer. That's always a possibility. Uh, in any case, don't sweat it. Doesn't matter uh, if you don't have a Looney or Toonie to toss my way, because I will be here no matter what catching all them Pokemon and then immediately losing them because of my own follies. Uh, with that out of the way, let's get back in action on today's stream. Uh, I think that was all the trainers for this particular route. I think we more or less got them all. Uh, yeah, which means we can... We kind of have one of two options here. Option number one is we can spend a little bit more time just leveling up at that route, making our Pokemon a little bit stronger. Uh, option number two, uh, we can actually uh, head over uh, to the SSN and take on some of the trainers that are waiting for us there. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, we got to deposit Santru in our Pokemon box uh, per the critical hit that we got earlier. Goodbye, little guy. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, set our timer for 30 minutes. Uh, we'll bring Tortellini back into the party for the time being. Okay. Who and where do we want to take on next? You know what? Let's check out how our Pokemon are doing XP-wise. Okay, this guy's got 200 to go. This guy's got about 200 to go. Yeah, we actually... Lots of our Pokemon right here and right now are actually kind of on the verge of leveling up a little bit. So let's actually spend a little bit of time leveling up in the grass over here. Because I think it'll do us some good. Uh, I'm going to start off... I want to at least get Cream Skull to level 17. You know, toss him a little bit of a bone. I also just, I kind of want to just see what other Pokemon are kind of waiting for us in the grass around here. We've only, until now, fought Sandshrews. And I kind of want to, you know, just enrich my knowledge ability of what the grass around here has for us. Come on. Ah, Tortellini. You can do better. I have actually some uh, leftover Tortellini waiting in my fridge right now. Uh, yesterday, uh, I did a little bit of fasting because I had eaten way too much the day before. Uh, so the day before, we went and celebrated my mother's birthday. Normally, her birthday is on the 4th of August. Um, but this time around, because uh, my mom and dad were both at their 
country cottage uh, the past weekend, we ended up only celebrating her birthday on Sunday. We went to a pretty yummy Italian place and had some pretty authentically yummy Italian food. Uh, and then from there, uh, on Tuesday, uh, I was able to uh, very conveniently pick up a nice uh, gluten-free cake on the way home from work. Uh, and we all had fun and enjoyed that together, but I ate a lot on that day, and I felt like I needed to recover the day after that. Uh, a little bit of a funny story about that gluten-free cake. I forget, I, I want to say that the bakery I picked it up at was Le Marquis. Um, it's a gluten-free bakery in Montreal. I just found it by kind of Googling uh, uh, gluten-free bakeries. Um, and it worked out very well because it was like a, a decently like medium-sized cake that I was fearful would not be able to uh, fit within my kind of like newly uh, attached bike basket, but it just, just barely managed to fit. Um, it was a real awkward bike ride home uh, because unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to fight this guy with this guy unless I use Fury Swipes. Let's, let's use Fury Swipes, see how that goes. Uh, it was a very awkward bike ride home because I had to take kind of an unorthodox route that I wasn't really familiar with because I had to go out of my way to go to the bakery. And then on top of that, I was like the whole time doing my best to make sure that I didn't accidentally knock over the cake and uh, lose $35 down the drain. Um, in any case, I managed to get it home without too much of an issue. Uh, and I was convinced that I had gotten a chocolate cake uh, because it had a very distinctly brown color to it. And I, I'm pretty certain that even when I selected it out of the refrigerator that it was being kept in, that it said like chocolate, like somewhere on the fridge. Maybe it was in front of another cake. In any case, we started digging into the cake. It was very apparent within the first few bites that like, oh, this is not a chocolate cake. This is a hazelnut cake. And it was a pretty good hazelnut cake, if I must say so. Uh, you know, all things considered. I mean, you know, gluten-free pastries, they have a, a certain taste to them. And if you're not used to or expecting that particular taste, it can be a little bit off-putting. I thought it was pretty good, all things considered. But the, the hazelnuttiness of it definitely, I think, turned me off a little bit. Once I got used to it, it was like, oh, okay, this is fine. This is okay. This is, you know, whatever. This is what it is. But... Yeah, I straight up just picked up a cake at a pastry shop thinking, oh, this is most definitely a chocolate cake. Nope, was not a chocolate cake. It was a hazelnut cake and not the hazelnutty flavor that you might associate with something like Nutella, for example. This is like real, real hazelnut. Goodbye, Sandrew. I got my uh, mother a couple of uh, books on gardening, actually. For a very long period of time, my parents used to really be into gardening. We used to have like a pretty, like actually impressive garden in our house's backyard. And then after we did a crazy extensive renovation project uh, a decade ago, um, we basically uh, ended up neglecting the garden and never really kind of went back to it. Um, and I, I get the sense that they have been kind of meaning to find the opportunity to finally go back to it and really kind of pick up the slack where they left off. And so I encouraged my mother and got her a couple of books on uh, organic and environmentally conscious gardening. Uh, I got her, it was like a um, one of those like four dummies books, but it was specifically on uh, like e ecological gardening. What was funny about it though is that that, uh, for Dummies book on ecological gardening was specifically written with people in Australia in mind. And like, that's like the only version of that book. It's like ecological gardening for dummies, specifically for people living in Australia or like more with Australian people in mind. It was like written by somebody from Australia. And it's like, it's kind of weird that they don't have <laughs> another version of that book written in mind for other people. Um, from around the world or, uh, y y you know, uh, written by somebody from like America. Kind of weird, but yeah, anyways. Um, mm, mm, mm. Who do I want to put at the front of the party here and now? You know what? Let's see. I want to see if I can push Creamsicle to level 
20. I'm going to, if I can get him to level, uh, I'm a global police agent. Well, you forget how many, like, police officers and, like, investigators there are in Gen 1. There are so many. Also, I completely forgot that there's, like, the chef's quarters over here. Salmon du salade. Les guests may gripe its fish again, however. Let's intro. I completely forgot that there is straight up a dude in this game that talks about serving salmon to people. This is definitely not canon. Yay! Got to be careful about the chesto berry because it's covered in onions. Well, look at that. So many berries. Look at that. Look at all those berries. It's too bad we'll not be able to go back here again. Yeah, if I get uh, Magic Carp to level 19, I'll just uh, use the one rare candy in my party to get him to level 20 so that he can finally evolve, because I am ready to be done with trying to level this dude up. All right. Hot dogs, you're up. Ooh, don't poison, don't poison, don't poison. There we go, perfect. Uh... I thought, I was so certain that I had managed to avoid the curse that is poisoning, but did not happen. I still have a, a Pecha Berry on hand, so I can use that if I need to. Oh, whoa, holy shit. That is kind of a pretty heavy-duty TM to give out this early in the game. Blueberry is actually pretty close to leveling up, too, at this point. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't actually think that there are any Pokemon in my party right now that can use Brick Break. I'm, I want to say, I want to go out on a limb and say that I'm pretty certain that Blastoise can learn Brick Break. But... I don't think War Turtle can. I don't think War Turtle has access to that move. There also are like, there are quite a few Pokemon coming up on this run that can learn Brick Break as well that I would rather teach it to. Another fucking poison, come on. Can I heal from these beds? I definitely feel like I could heal from like something on the SSN. Let's go ahead, let's see here. We have two Pecha Berries, but I feel like, you know, it feels like kind of a waste to use it right here and right now. Let's just, let's battle these trainers. We will avoid using Blueberry and then we will go and heal them up. So we're not just constantly, you know, walking back and forth. Oh, well, not a trainer. And it's an actual Wigglytuff, who, of course, we drew on our previous stream uh, with absolute perfection. No mistakes. Waitress? Jesus. Cherry Pie. I wonder... I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't feel like cherry pies are a thing that people tend to enjoy on the reg living in Japan. I'm curious what that was in the original English version. I, I bet it was like... I'm going to go out on a limb. I bet it was something like Peach Mochi. I think that's 100% what it was. A thousand million percent. I don't think there's a single 
bone in my body that could be wrong about this one. Come on. There we go. Now don't don't poison point poison yourself. Not again. I could actually that is actually one of the advantages to using um, magnitude is that you don't make physical contact with the other Pokemon, so it is a way to avoid poisoning. God damn, the game is <laughs> really, really freaking determined to poison me. All right, unfortunately, this is not going to be enough to KO him. If this had been a, a Magnemite, I might have been able to pull it off, but... Uh, all right. I don't love doing this because I'm putting myself into potential physical contact with you, but this is the only way I can guarantee that I can kill you next turn. All right, well, I'm not necessarily uh, upset that I got a crit there because I am happy that I managed to defeat it. I also did not get poisoned, so there is that as well. Uh, let's go ahead and let's spin the Wheel of Criticality. One, two, and three. Five push-ups. I'm kind of amazed that... It seems like it very rarely, if ever, lands on 10 push-ups. It's always five push-ups. Always five push-ups. I wonder why that is. with it. Mm. Uh, this guy does not have anything else, huh? And we can't heal out his bed. This one is... Th this door is directly parallel to the exit to the SSN, so let's go ahead... Whoops. And let's enter into it. Oh, lo and behold, here we go. I knew that there was an opportunity for us to rest on the boat, and there it is. All right, well, no need to go to a... What the hell? I thought I, I, thought I hit the button to fucking switch back over. My stream deck is actively trying to sabotage my stream. Uh, but yeah, after I defeated the gentleman, I went in here, and this girl graciously offered to heal my team. Thank you oh so much. Okay, let's go in here. What do we got? Oh, this guy looks like he is itching for a fight. Uh, I guess Cream Skull's at the front of the party again. Hmm. If this guy didn't lower my attack, I would still try to take him out, but... With the attack reduction, it's just, it's not worth it, unfortunately. Well, would you look at that? Hot Dogs evolves into a Doug Trio at level 26, I could close out tonight's stream evolving him into a Doug Trio if I, like, really 
grind and focus on that if I want to. If I get like a, a double evolution to close out tonight's stream, if I evolve both Creamsicle and um, Hot Dogs into their respective evolutions, that would be incredible. Goodbye, Growlithe. Alrighty. Oh, I'm sorry, Thomas. What happened? What happened, Thomas? Your Pokemon faint? What happened? What happened? By the way, we gotta be careful around here because we will have another rival fight at some point. Oh. It, it's weird. <laughs> the guy made mention of strength, but... Uh, alas, uh, we did not obtain strength in this room. I believe we have to... I believe we'll have to wait until the Safari Zone to get strength, I want to say. Uh, these two guys <laughs> look like trainers, and they look like the kind of trainers that would have uh, Fighting-type and Water-type Pokémon at their disposal, so I suspect that Weeping Bell will probably be at the center of attention for this one. Actually, we're both at level 17. I want to see if I can actually muscle through this one on my own. Jesus, come on. Did you have to really crit that one? Was that really necessary? It definitely was not necessary. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say right here and right now that that was not necessary. Nah. One, two, and three. Five push-ups! Mm. What can I say? The crits keep coming and they don't stop coming. Let's go ahead and let's bring uh, the push-up camera in. And let's do some push-ups. say this I'm happy uh, that I'm doing push-ups now rather than when I was doing push-ups at the beginning of the year during my cooking streams because back at the beginning of the year I weighed like a portly 258 260 pounds more than 260 pounds at some points right now I'm down to 245 I actually weighed myself this morning and it said that I'm at 245.4 which is not ideal, um, but certainly is a step in the right direction. Oh, uh, man. I am looking forward to doing push-ups when I literally weigh zero pounds, which, by the way, totally possible. You can actually work yourself down until you're uh, exactly zero pounds. A hundred thousand percent possible. Look it up in a Farmer's Almanac if you don't believe me, because the farmers know what's up. Shelter has access to some Ice-type moves, but I, I would be surprised if he actually pulled them out at this point in the game. <sighs> wow, okay. I was wrong. Good thing that that's very weak. The thing about Shelter is that Shelter is only... Um, <laughs> water type, it's not water, ice, like cloister, uh, which means uh, we can actually successfully beat this guy without fear of it KOing us with its ice type moves. I definitely 
His ice type moves probably would not have done a lot of damage to Creamsicle. However, Shelter and Cloyster are both known for their sky high defense stats, which means I probably would not have been dealing a lot of damage to them either. Uh, I'm going to swap in Blueberry for this one. I feel like this guy could actually seriously hurt Diglett if he wanted to. Also, Blueberry about to level up, so there is that as well. We also have access to Bite, so. Goodbye, or maybe not. I, I was really, I, I jumped the gun a little bit on that. Come on, Blueberry. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Hell yeah, here we go. Ugh. Duncan, you're like the name of that toy shop from Home Alone 2. Starring uh, former president of the United States and uh, Mar-a-Lago defilement resident Donald Trump. All right. I'm a little bit surprised that this guy didn't have any, or, or rather the previous guy didn't have any fighting type Pokemon on hand. Nope, not, not any different here for this guy. Uh, I'm going to swap in Blueberry for this one, even though we've already established that his uh, Ice type moves don't do a lot of damage. I think it's better if he takes him on. Yeah, that was not a crit. Shelter just has, like, that bad special defense. Oh, look at that. Battle immediately. Let's grab ourselves some more water. Yeah, I don't know how, but these bugs always get into the basement at night. It's really annoying. I should have swapped out to Magikarp for that. He's really close to level 19. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yay, Rigatoni leveled up. You know what? Let's give Tortellini another shot. Again, it's always good to have ourselves a backup. So might as well level him up just a little bit more. Bubble, come on. What do we have in store for us here? Ether. Look at that. I'm just realizing <laughs> I'm realizing something on the upper floor. We got our hands on Brick Break, uh, a fantastic move. But I'm realizing right now, if we had missed uh, that Brick Break, we never would have been able to get it for the rest of the game, which is pretty sad. Like that's like a, a pretty major TM for this generation to hide in an area that is I don't, I don't want to say like pretty easy to miss, but like that if you can miss it on your opportunity, we'll be gone forever. Uh, these guys 
look like they are both itching for a battle. This guy looks like he probably has Magikarps and or Gyaradoses. Mm, he had neither. Uh... Rigatoni, you are up. Thank God. Hmm. Literally, like, I I'm pretty certain Constrict is, like, the weakest base power moving into all of Pokemon. It has, like, 10... 10, like, a base damage of, like, 10. No joke. Uh, or maybe, or wait a minute, what about Poison Sing? I think Poison Sing might actually beat it, in fact. Uh, who do we want to, well, obviously we'll switch into Creamsicle first. I do feel ba kind of bad. We've been battling too many, um... We've been battling too many Pokemon in a row where Diglett has not really been given the opportunity to shine. But, I mean, obviously that's not something, you know, that I consciously selected. Staryu. We have not seen Staryu since the second gym battle, so this is exciting. I just want to see if I can take another stab at killing him myself. Let's see. Mm, seven damage. I'll, I'll do a couple more tackles and then I'll swap out if things are not... Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Recover. Now that is... An unexpected move to encounter this early on. Uh, I'm going to swap out to Tortellini for this one. Goodbye, Staryu. Yay! Creamsicle grew to level 19, which means, finally, at long last, I can use my rare candy to get him all the way to level 20. I know some people might ham and haw and complain about how this is a misuse of a rare candy, but... Well, and look at that. According to my timer, we can actually bring Sandshrew back into the party, which I will promptly do right after our evolutionary business right here. Some people might say that using a rare candy right here and right now is a misuse of it, but I really want to get him into becoming a Gyarados. I can't waste another second uh, trying to use him in battle. Uh, and more than that, more than that, like, fact of the matter is that you don't know when uh, the prize wheel of criticality is going to land on drop five, and we're going to have to drop five items from our bag, and one of those items might be have to be a rare candy so yeah we're going ahead and we are spending our rare candy on this dude unfortunate that the first move he learns is bite which is a move that doesn't really take advantage of his fantastic attack he previously had only 10 attack he now has 52 attack that's like a five times increase and look he has 33 special attack that's actually uh, it's third best on the team, actually. It's not, like, bad, but it is a little unfortunate that he doesn't gain access to another move off the bat that would, you know, be more befitting of his uh, unique attributes. Uh, I am curious. If I go to my TM case, is there anything I could teach him, actually, off the bat? I don't think I can teach him Dig or Brick Break. Probably not Rock Tomb. Uh... The thing about secret power is it depends where I'm battling and using it, so it probably won't be super effective. I'm just curious. Bullet Seed. I can only teach it to my grass state Pokemon. Yeah, it's not worth it. All right.
I'm going to go ahead I'm going to grab good old Sandshrew from the PC box. And we are going to continue getting through SSN alongside him. Uh, looking at the time for the rest of our stream, I suspect we probably won't have the opportunity to battle Lieutenant Surge before our time is up. But I am confident that we'll probably be able to take on our rival and obtain the TM for cut. Uh, sorry, the HM for cut. So we'll focus on that. And there we go. Look at him. He gained another level. How nice. Uh, oh, yeah. And we'll want actually, we'll actually want Tapioca to be at the front of the party for now. I gotta say, after really kind of like languishing in the doldrums for quite some time, only having War Turtle and Magikarp in our party, we actually have like a pretty strong team of powerhouses. We got War Turtle, we got Gyarados. We got uh, Weeping Bell, uh, and uh, of course, last but certainly not least, uh, we have uh, our good friend Diglett, who will very soon be a Doug Trio. Oh, and we got a uh, Sandshrew as well, but Sandshrew doesn't have any good moves yet, so his his usefulness is limited. They need to introduce a class of trainer in subsequent Pokemon games that's like pirate. Like they need to introduce like pirate trainers, not like like I know that like Team Aqua from Generation 3 kind of had like a piratey theme to them, but that we need to introduce like actual like proper real ass pirates into the game. So oh, Seismic Toss, that's actually not a bad move at this point in the game because that will be able to at least 3 KO me. I'm going to try as hard as I can to <laughs> scratch this guy to death, but I, I know that eventually my luck will run out. Ooh, not good. All right. I tried real hard, but unfortunately my time with him is up. Uh, goodbye and say hello to Creamsicle. Oh, I forgot. This guy has access to Intimidate. I forgot. That is going to be a huge advantage going forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, we really lucked out. And I know it's like very... How to say, like... <laughs> some people would almost call it a little bit of a... Um, What's the word I'm searching for here? A little bit cheesy to use the Magikarp that that one dude gives you, but... Oh shit, I completely forgot. We had not been in this room yet. Some people would say it's a little bit cheesy to use that one Magikarp you get early on, but I mean, to be fair, you can fish up a Magikarp when you get to Vermilion City as well. Which is like only a short while after that, so... Yeah, I don't think it's that... I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it that cheesy. So Tentacruel, sorry, Tentacool, well, both Tentacool and Tentacruel actually have really good special defense stats, which is why my bite is not doing amazingly well. I still wanted to bring him out though, just because I didn't want Tentacool to kind of give too many of the other members of my team are run for their money. I thought for a second switching in uh, Gyarados for this one, but Gyarados wouldn't have done great. His, his tackle is still not that amazing because it is such a low base power move. And Bite just would have done like that much worse damage against Tentacool considering his special attack is just not that good. That, talk about, like, there are a lot of Pokemon that benefited from the physical special split in Gen 4. Gyarados was a Pokemon that benefited so much from it. Like, that Pokemon was already a good Pokemon before the 
physical special split that became an amazing Pokemon after the physical special split. Like that Pokemon and Waterfall in Gen 4 was like peanut butter and Nutella. Yay, rest. I, um, not a bad move, although I don't feel like there are any Pokemon on our team that would really benefit from it right away. Excuse me. I always remark whenever I'm sitting a little bit too low in my chair, I kind of look almost like Diglett, if that makes any sense. Like I'm like this little little hole kind of popping out of the ground. This guy's not a trainer. <sighs> I just. Hey, it's Snorlax. They previously talked about him earlier on on the ship. I just, I really need to just, uh, at this point, my primary goal is just to get Sandshrew to a point where he learns just a move that makes him a little bit more viable in battle. Because he's like the only Pokemon on my team at this point that isn't like overpowered and or at least has access to like a pretty good stab move. Gyarados, very powerful. It doesn't have any stab moves, but his sheer power makes up for it. Uh, Rigatoni, not very powerful, but he, he has access to a fantastic stab move in Vine Whip. Uh, but Sandshrew kind of has neither, and that's why we've got to train him up a little bit right now. Mm. I don't want to get poisoned again and have to immediately heal, so I'm going to bring Rigatoni back in. <sighs> Come on. Jeez, uh, that was a lot of damage. Did, did anyone see how much fucking damage that did. Fuck you, man. All right. Let's go ahead and let's spin the prize wheel of criticality. Hopefully the last time on tonight's stream. Or maybe not. We'll see. That rival could screw us over. Drop five. All right. That means that after this battle, we are going to have to drop five items that are bumming around in our bag. Let's go. There we go. Already our luck is beginning to improve. Honestly, I should probably just consider bringing out um, Diglett to deal with Tentacruels, because at this point, I've not seen them use any Water-type moves. Oh, there we go. Tapioca finally learned to move an Attacking-type move that wasn't Scratch, and it was Poison Sting. Never change, Tapioca. Never ever change. Goodbye. All right, we're gonna have to battle one more dude to get that item. Hmm, do I wanna, I really wanna give hot dogs a little bit more of an opportunity to battle a little bit more so that we can level them up. You know what, I'll keep tapioca to the front of the party for the first battle, then I'll swap out to hot dogs and then I'll, I'll keep him out. Oh, there's only the one Pokemon. Oh, but it is Pikachu. I wonder, Ooh, you know what? Let's see if I can poison him. Oh. 
Come on. Come on. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Ah, uh, fuck. If that had poisoned him... Also, I need to drop five items. I completely forgot. Let's spin the prize wheel. One, two, and three. Ten push-ups. Okay. Uh, let's just get it over with right here and right now. I was about to say we should wait until after the battle is over, but... Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's do it now. Come on, poison him. Come on, just get your poison game on. Don't leave me hanging like this. I mean, I'm amazed that I've not gotten a miss yet, seeing as how... We're dealing with double team here. Uh, I think I gotta swap out. Fuck, I was really hoping I could take him on. I was really hoping I could take him on entirely with tapioca. I really was hoping. Finally. Fuck! Now hold on a second. I don't think that Pikachu has any electric attacking moves. We saw that he just used Thunder Wave. He has access to Slam. He has access to Quick Attack. And he has access to Double Team. He doesn't have Thunder Shock, Thunder... No, he doesn't have... He doesn't have Thunder Shock or Thunder Bolt, which means that... We can actually take care of him with Creamsicle if need be. Let's do that. Actually, this is a pretty good choice because immediately we lowered this guy's attack, which means he is not doing as much. There we go. Stardust. All right, we got to drop five before I forget again. We're going to drop, let's drop a Paralyzed Heal. Uh, we can drop an either. All right, that's three items. What's next? Uh, let's go to our Berry Pouch. We can afford to drop a Pecha Berry. Four, and let's go ahead and let's drop ourselves a Pokeball. There we go. I'm hoping that this is the last time I'll have to heal with her. Man, oh man, it is stunning to me that it takes... Sandrew so many levels to learn a move of any kind of merit. Like, Jesus Christ, that guy's been stuck in the doldrums of moveset hell for so long. Uh, do I even want to have him at the front of the party? I kind of want to level up Diglett a little bit. You know what? Let's have him at the front of the party for a little bit. 
Why not? Here we go, more uh, trainers, but this time, this time, we'll be able to take them out real quick. Hopefully. All right, here we go. I was concerned it was going to be another one of those trainers that only has Pidgeys, but uh, that was not the case. Come on, hot dogs. There we go. That move is real killer. Ooh, Pikachu. Sorry, Pikachu. But your show is over. Ah! I'm just gonna power through this. We can heal our paralysis later. If I'm battling against a Pokemon that I have a good advantage against, I don't even need to worry about the paralysis. Like Growlithe. Uh, Ember could still... I mean, that that's not... Damn it, I, I got my attack lowered, and then I did the weakest form of magnitude. What the hell, man? Fuck! Alright, I think I might have to... Shit! I was just about to say, I think I might have to <laughs> switch out after this. Maybe not. Yay, level 24. Two more levels, and we will already have evolved. Uh, I'm going to swap out at this point. Creamsicle can handle it. And... Bite. I don't need to worry, though. Its attack is already lowered, so we should be in good standing. Come on. Ooh, there we go. A little bit of last-minute luck. And that's how the cookie crumbles. Two more doors over here. Uh, these aren't trainers, though. Just people chatting about the Safari Zone. Is there anything on this side? No. Fuck you, man. Why does this dude always have to show out of fucking nowhere, huh? Good news is that we have a great team at this point. We're unlikely to get seriously hurt in this battle. I mean, look at that guy. Pidgeotto, level 19. Do you want to know what level my blueberry is at? Level 27. Almost 10 levels higher than your quaint little Pidgeotto, my man. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's toast. I, I, was, I was trying to say both like toast, but like also like roast, but also like boil at the same time. Came out real wrong. In any case, we're going to toast and boil this bird real bad. While we still don't have a fantastic counter for Ivysaur, we do have Creamsicle. And even though Creamsicle's like, uh, attack lowering Intimidate isn't like amazing, it is enough that we have just the advantage over this dude. I'm curious, though. Okay, so that did about 10 damage. I'm curious. I, I suspect that bite might be like the same amount of damage, actually. Wow, we are getting unbelievably lucky. Oh, 
Not so lucky anymore, I guess. Do I want to use an Awakening? It feels like a bit of a, a bit of a waste, but I do have two of them, so let's go ahead and let's use it. Uh, nope, 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 nope. There we go. Bite, bite. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I was really hoping that we would be able to take him out without getting uh, asleep again. Um. Hmm. <laughs> it would be really funny if I actually was able to swap into Beedrill and take him out sooner. The problem is, is Beedrill has a speed stat of 20. Mm. Gyarados has 40. There's no way that Beedrill is faster than Ivysaur, and I don't want to kind of use him needlessly. You know what? I'm going to swap in Rigatoni, and even though his Vine Whip isn't all that effective, it will still kill it at this point. There we go. I was I was concerned for a second I might be slower, but I was not. There we go. Kadabra is a pretty powerful Pokemon for this early in the game. Like, I'm talking like fully evolved form levels of powerful. However, unfortunately, sadly, he still dies very badly to my bite. But still, look at that. Like, that didn't do that much damage, but he was faster than me. And with a little bit more level parity, that could have really torn into me. Raticate. Um, hmm, I feel like I owe hot dogs. Uh, I, I feel bad about kind of <laughs> not really being able to use him a whole lot in this battle, so I'm just going to swap him in at the front, and then I'm going to have Rigatoni take over. Oh, Hyper Fang. Uh, not a move that I love. Not a move that I love. I am actually kind of concerned I might get crit killed. Uh, or would I? But if, I, if Rigatoni dies, I mean... I always have another Bell Sprout that I can fall back on, so maybe it's okay. Fuck! Fuck, that is my fault. That is my fault. I should have. Uh, I know I just said, oh man, it's okay if I. <laughs> he dies. I always have another Bell Sprout that I can fall back on, but that. Fucking shit. I did not. I still did not want that to happen. That is unfucking called for. Uh, and I should have I should have known that some trick of that sort was coming. Uh, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh man. Looks like your boy is closing out the stream with two critical hits. We'll have to mop up and get the HM for cut at the beginning of next week's stream. Uh, let's go ahead and let's bring in our prize cam and let's see what the prize wheel has decided to leave us with for the end of the stream. Drop five. We got to drop five items from our current bag. And what is our second punishment? Ten push-ups. Well, I am glad that we're not dropping any more items from our bag, but that is certainly... <laughs> I feel like that's the stream trying to tell me something. Let's go ahead. Uh, let's drop our ever-so-beloved items. I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to start by tossing three Pokeballs. Because we certainly have plenty of Pokeballs to go around. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to drop... No, I might want to actually hold on to some Paralyzed Heals. Let's drop a Super Potion. Because we got a lot of them on hand. 
And I feel like I will... I don't want to say I'll never use... You know what? I'll definitely... I probably will not be using this repel anytime soon, so I am going to toss that repel. Mm. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save right here, seeing as how we're not going to be progressing any further. And I am going to bring in uh, our <laughs> frequently brought up over the course of this stream push-up camera. I no joke, I probably did like 40 push-ups over the course of this stream. I did too many. Too many. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Oh. Oh. <sighs> and with that, thank you to everybody for tuning into tonight's stream. Remember, as always, that you can catch these streams live on Twitch every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST, as well as as VODs on YouTube every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. EST. And of course, as always, you can also find me on Twitter at Alex Cozina if the tweets and the twats are more your speed. Till next time, I'm Alexander Cozina, aka Posy Bear. Cozy Bear, not Posy Bear. Posy Bear sounds like the version of me that's trying real, real, super duper hard to be someone who I'm not. I am who I am. I'm the one and only Cozy Bear. And I want you to have a good night or a good day. Depends on what time zone you're currently in. <laughs>